Sidney Crosby for MVP. What do you think? Huh? Good morning to you. Good Friday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Penguins. It comes your way bright and early every weekday. If you're into football and or baseball, I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Pirates. The same place that you found this particular program. Penguins will play the Maple Leafs tomorrow night in Toronto, hockey night in Canada and all that other fuss. They'll be looking to win their third in a row. They'll be looking to extend their power play streak to three in a row, having scored twice in each of the past two games. And the guy at the front of that effort, as ever, will be Sid. Is anyone really even noticing? Around here I'm talking, not the hockey world. Here, in Pittsburgh. What kind of a season Sid's having? Like, you could put it into the context of how he's faring against other players in the league, against other top players, without bringing up age and just say, hey, he's got 17 goals in 28 games. That goal total is tied for fourth in the NHL. At any age, at any point of his brilliant career, that would be impressive. Then I could add in that only three of those goals have come on the power play because you know why. Now, yeah, of course, the power play, as we've seen, is a big, big part of the game. And you do want, you need your best players to be productive on the power play. However, his 13 goals at even strength are number one in the league. Also pretty impressive, independent of his age. But once you put the age into it, Sid is having... And 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 I'm going to pause here for a second. We're roughly one third of the way through the season. So extrapolating stuff is always a little bit dangerous, but whatever. It's a day off. We can do that. Sid is having one of the greatest outputs in NHL history for someone his age. And the real reason for that is that he's just being a continuation of his great self. I'm going to read to you after I duly credit the research done by an outfit called the Hockey Data Bank. An amazing set of numbers. And I want you to stick with me because this isn't the sort of thing that easily translates over audio. So just listen to the similarity in these numbers. This is now Sid's 19th NHL season. In his very first one, he had 100 points. That was his actual figure. Now, all the rest of these, according to the Hockey Data Bank, are what are called era-adjusted numbers, meaning if NHL scoring in general went up or went down, they'll adjust his point figures. You usually only see this sort of thing when it's spread out over decades, but they did this for Sid just to try to keep it as even-keeled as possible to underscore his consistency. There were three years... Sid's sixth, seventh, and eighth seasons in the NHL where his error adjusted points really topped out at 142, 153, and 141. Now listen to the final 10 years or the most recent 10 years, including this one of his career. 99, 98, 107, 91, 104, 94, 96, 95, 89, and the current one is projecting him to finish with 88 points. He doesn't change. Moreover, and I, I feel like this is something that blows me away, maybe as much as anything about Sid's career, especially as he's matured, he doesn't play any differently. You'll remember, of course, when Mario Lemieux made his famous, legendary comeback from retirement. Been out of the game for three years. He returned kind of like this in his mid-30s. But he chose to reinvent himself as more of a sniper as opposed to the everything that he was before that. He'd park himself down low on the left side. And he would take one-timers that only he could take. He would shoot from angles that only he would consider. And he'd nail them. And it made him a very different type of threat than he was 
in the first phase of his career. Sid is just Sid. He's not doing anything that looks any different than what he did in his rookie year. He's spinning around down low. He's pinballing his way across the zone. He's cycling with his wingers. He's scoring from the same spots that he scored in. Yeah, he's obviously a more complete, more educated, more refined player. But the style, the methodology really hasn't changed much. And I'm not telling you anything that Sid wouldn't say himself. Anytime I've brought up with him something that he might have to do in order to adapt to being a certain age, he just shakes his head and says, I'm just going to play my game. And that's what he's doing at age 36. And he's being this spectacularly productive. Can he be the MVP? My answer to that is, well, the, the first real answer is that we're only 28 games into this season. But my next answer would be, if he was playing in the National Football League or in Major League Baseball, no, no chance. Because the way they define their MVPs is just best performer. It helps if your team is in the playoffs and your team doesn't stink, but you'll see players from last place teams routinely get picked. In the NHL, the Hart Trophy is defined as the player adjudged to be most valuable to his team. And I'm reading that directly. That's why Taylor Hall was able to win it for the Devils a few years ago. I cast my heart vote for Hall because he was almost single-handedly responsible for dragging a substandard New Jersey team into the playoffs. They had no business being anywhere near the postseason. He made it happen. He accounted for an unbelievable percentage of their overall offense. So if Sid were to end up Continuing to score at this pace, and by the way, he's on a 51 goal pace and he's never had more than 52 in a season. Should have mentioned that as well. And given that he already has the prominence that he does, the unrivaled prominence that he does in this league, and if the Penguins were to get into the playoffs and da 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 da, yeah, heck yeah, he's a candidate. When we come back, J1Q. J1Q comes from Steve, who asks, DK, I sure hope Eric Carlson gets it together. I know he had a ton of shots in that game in Montreal, but some of his mistakes and playing his own end lately are cringeworthy. What happened to the guy who could bring the puck out easily and essentially skate through the opposition? Steve Carlson has had not one but two games now between the one you referenced in Montreal and then the night before against the Coyotes, where... He's looked a little bit like the skittish young version of Carlson in Ottawa. The one who, when he was on the rink for the Senators, you kind of felt like you could take as much advantage of him as he could of you. I've mentioned on this program for the better part of two months that I've been pleasantly surprised that we never saw an episode of that version of Carlson while he's been in black and gold. Well, that changed this week. It's normal, it's human for players to have a rough night, a rough couple of nights, even a rough week or two. We've seen that over the years, if you want to compare him to somebody else on this same roster with Chris Letang, where you're just kind of holding your breath every time he goes over the boards. And Mike Sullivan's talked about this in the past with Letang's troubles, which obviously you and I both can relate to a lot more directly than Carlson's, which is why I'm citing Latang. And Sullivan has said, one way or another, you need him. So you've got to let him ride it out. You have no choice. If that costs you a game or two in the middle of the season, it doesn't matter. Because the only way he's going to get back to being himself, especially given his uh, history of extensive ice time, is to... Toil through 
25, 26 minutes a night of it until it all comes back together again. Now, having said that, Carlson is not that skittish kid in Ottawa anymore. He's in his early 30s. He's got a history of being one of the NHL's very best players at his position. He's coming off a 101 point season for a last place team, which takes, uh, you know, some amount of uh, stones, I guess you could say. So probably as close as I'm going to come to saying something smart on this subject is just going to have to ride it out. He's capable of doing exactly what you described there, Steve. He's, he's capable of skating it out of the zone. He's capable of being his own breakout. He's also capable of just screwing with some four checkers head, deking him out of his jock and working his way up the rink after that. He's also capable of throwing a 150 foot pass that's tape to tape and springing someone for a breakaway at the far blue line. He's all of that. He's all of that. He also can be this because he's human. I, I'd give him all the mulligans. I think the world of what he's done so far with the Penguins. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Penguins. We'll be back with a new one Monday. 